Hi, it's Wayne O'Keefe and uh, just fishing this morning the Maribyrnong River. Um, a bit of noise around, there's a bit of uh, construction work going on to the side there so that's probably going to interrupt things a little bit but you know we're going to manage. Um, still this morning but I'm expecting winds to build later today so probably the window of time I have to fish as per usual is always pretty short. I'll see how I go with that. Um, fishing into what should be a rising tide so I, I thought at this point based on the tide charts and that that the tide would be rising I think it's probably it's at the bottom and it's just starting to come up now so that is good uh, I'll, be, I'll be fishing into a rising tide a little bit overcast very good and if just a light breeze comes up pretty perfect um, the uh, I think the the construction work has actually put a little bit of um, silts and stuff like that into the water which has not really helped it. Also we've had a lot of rain lately, that's, um, that's basically put a bit of colour in the water as well, you know, so there's a lot of things floating in it. Um, if, the, if that affects water quality too much it can push the fish out, but there's always resident fish. Uh, it could be tough fishing today, you know, I think I say that every time I go fishing. But um, if it is, um, I've started off with one rig I've set up with my standard survival gear, which is a, a running line with a burley cage on it and a super light trace at the end of it. So a very fine pre-stretched line. So instead of the, the trace being heavy, um, you know, heavier to avoid rocks and things like that, it's actually lighter to make the hook or the bait look very natural. I've got a small 14, a size 14 hook on that. So all in all what will happen is that bait on the bottom, it's not held on the bottom by heavy line or anything like that. It'll move around just like any other piece of food on the bottom as the fish walk, um, move by it. The other rod I've got, as I do as well, is I've got a heavier rig on there. Just in case there's a big fish around, I've put a, a, a heavier, uh, it's got heavier line on it for a start, plus it's a paternoster rig because I'll be leaving it out longer. In these waters here, there are the southern sea star, those starfish that have been, um, that came in through the um, Japanese cargo ships that have invaded the area. If you leave your bait out there too long, it'll get covered by that. So uh, the Paternoster rig, if I keep it tight, because the, uh, the dropper and the hook is further up from the weight, so the weight is on the bottom, the hook is further up. If I keep it tight, that can keep the bait off the bottom which means hopefully it won't get covered by a sea star and uh, something big might come along and take it. I've got a size hook, size hook, a size six hook on that and a, uh, a piece of um, spicy chicken, so a big piece of that. But I'm going to try something else today. I'm going to experiment with reels and naturals. In other words, I've got some live baits, I've got worms, I've got maggots. I've also got artificial worms, artificial maggots, and I'm gonna just do a bit of a comparison to see if there is a difference in catch rate on these things. So the artificials, I've got most of them are, are scented, so you buy them, they're reasonably expensive. Um, they have the scent of some attractant in them anyway, and I'm gonna just see if that makes a difference. So let's see how we go with this competition of artificials versus the real thing. Now I just want to give you an idea of um, some of the, the artificial baits you can get which, which work pretty effectively. One that I particularly like is this, uh, the gulp, um, these are maggots. Right? So these, these particular ones, they come scented, they're a nice white colour, easy to put on the hook, last for a long time and uh, they, they really are a good substitute. I've caught, well, I've actually used these in the surf before when I've been going for mullet, using mullet then to be going for larger fish like gummy shark and uh, snapper. But um, they, they work very, very well. You can get all kinds of little tiny worms. Um, these ones don't come scented. Uh, so what I always do is I usually dip them in some of the scents that I have. Um, but having them in the tackle box, these are, these are only small, but having them in the tackle box just means you've got something should, you know, all your fresh stuff run out. Here, and um, I really had to hold the rod and, um, oh, I've just lost it. Strike into it. And it was on an artificial maggot. <laughs> Jeez. So, took the maggot and everything. And gone. <laughs> Now I just missed a, a really good bite. I'd been getting little tips on the rod, little hits, you know, the, the rod tip would be moving a bit. So I picked up the rod, so I was basically using the, you know, the touch method where I'm just sort of holding the rod, waiting to feel uh, the fish pull into the bait, 
so that I could strike into it. And uh, I struck into it. I started to, I, I had it hooked, I started to reel in and then it got off. And I, you know, I just pulled, the, uh, pulled everything in and checked my hook and it was blunt. It actually had a little tiny curve in the tip of the point. So I used a, I had it all tied on, so I, I used my uh, whetstone here for, for sharpening hooks. I've got a nice keen edge on it. I shouldn't move, shouldn't lose other fish that way. I usually always test my hooks. I didn't this time, and from the last time I went fishing, uh, because I've been fishing around rocks, I took the edge off, and I lost a fish because of it. So have one of these. They only cost a, a couple of bucks, I think. Um, I've, I've got this one's very very old, but you can get these in tackle stores. Just whetstones. Put an edge on your hook because even chemically sharpened hooks over time will lose their edge. You don't have to throw them away, just put a new edge on them. And uh, it's surprising how long you can have a hook for. As long as it doesn't rust and you keep a sharp edge on it, it's just as good as new. Well, I just caught this little brim here. It took me on quite a merry run. Um, this was on the, the maggots on my survival, uh, my survival gear which is the, the, the fine line and small hook. Anyway, little brim for the day, that's not bad. Keep going with this. Now, this is, I'll just give you um, an idea of my, the, the, survival, the survival pack that I use. All it is, is the running burly cage, as I said, to a, a line stop. So people put on um, swivels, I put on the line stop because I can move that line stop. Then I've got a standard main line here through to I'm tied it onto a much finer trace small hook here and some maggots so that's very fine small gear to pick up if there's only small fish about today that's what I'll pick up I put a swivel on here a swivel clip on here so that's hot instead of having a, um, a sinker a running sinker I have the burly cage because that can deliver the burly but the other thing is with this uh, the snap swivel I've just found out the water's starting to move harder now it's not really holding bottom I want it to hold I want my weight to hold bottom so my bait stays in place so I would just clip that off take that one the smaller belly cage off and put my bigger one on so I'm going from a 40 gram to a 60 gram here I just clip that on and it would have helped if I had my glasses, but anyway, I think I've got that on. Now, I'm ready to go with a heavier weight. That's the real convenience of having the snap swivel there. If I'd had a sinker on there, a running sinker, I would have had to cut the line, take it off, put it back on. I do this in seconds, and if the water slows down a bit, I'll go back to the 40 gram weight. So it just makes it much more convenient. So I can hold bottom, I want to hold bottom, I want this to stay on the bottom where I've cast to, because that'll distribute the burley there, and I want the burley to stay pretty much roughly in the same area. I'll keep casting to that same spot each time. I build up the burley in the area, that attracts the fish, and they find my bait. That's how it works. Managed to get this one out, it actually, <laughs> I pulled it in here, it's only a small brim, but it went underneath that uh, floating device over there. Whoops, oh, gotta get him out. Um, and it went under the thing I was actually pulling pulling that floating thing there along to try and get it so there's a brim small brim caught on live maggots and uh, with the caught on my survival gear stuff I have to cut the line and put this one back What's interesting today is that uh, I've been getting most of my bites on the light line. The fish seem to want to be able to pull through the line. They need, they, they want to run with that bait a little bit. Um, or it could be just the fact that it's much lighter line and looks more natural. The Paternosteruga I've got on heavier line. Um, I've had that one fish that I got in close and lost. But apart from that, really I've had nothing, tiny little bites, nothing else. The the other rod certainly is uh, where um, I've got those I've got had more action and I think today it might be it looks so natural and also the fish get a bit of chance to play with it so you know they can pull the line through the weight without feeling much resistance at all and the, the Paternoster rig the the thing is is 
the weight is there, nothing is running, so as soon as they actually pick up the bait, they start to feel resistance. So sometimes it's good to be able to contrast these, but I have got heavier line on the Paternoster rig, so I don't know if it's the lighter line that is doing it or, or the fact that they can play with it, but whatever it is, that is working better. Well, they certainly like the naturals. I just had maggots on this little hook here and uh, all of them just got wiped off in one bite. I just got this um, this mullet and uh, <laughs> I had to change over a couple of times. What I was finding is I did have that one fish I got in close with the artificial, but after that, it's only live stuff they seem to be taking. So anyway, at least I'm catching something that way. Um, I got one fish on an artificial maggot, but really most of the bites are coming from either live maggots or from the spicy chicken. Um, I haven't got much on the, the heavier line, but I, I have had some. I'm getting bites now on, on one rod, which has got the spicy chicken on it. So really I'd have to say, it's good to have this stuff, and on day, some days um, they will help you. Like having it in your tackle box, they're, they're, they last a long time. So you know, if you come to a, a point where you're sort of running out of bait, it's good to have these things as a backup. But as a primary bait, I'd say the real stuff does it every time. So as I said before, live baits will do it much better than anything else. And then freshly killed does it, and then scented and uh, baits that have got the right ingredients in them. That really helps a lot. Then you get down to your basic, your basic baits, and then the, the um, artificials after that, I think is probably about the right order. Anyway, love to know if you've used artificials and they've been really, really good. Just uh, you know, let me know about that one because uh, in my experience, I've, I've had success with them, but I haven't, uh, I haven't actually been there where I've had the best bait possible to compare with them. It's usually when I'm running out, or sometimes I've just found bait being pulled off so fast, I put an artificial on just because it will last longer. Uh, also, I've just noticed things like when you're fishing in the surf, often uh, crabs can be a problem. Putting artificials on then uh, really gets rid of the crabs, but you might get less fish for doing it. Well, I've been here for a while. I've caught a couple of fish. I've lost a few. I've lost two in close, and uh, I've had a number of bites. The uh, artificial baits just weren't cutting it today. Fresh baits and the spicy chicken were doing it. So uh, there's a message for me there. So at least I've learned from that. Anyway, I'm going to call it quits. But if you're interested in the, the gear, if you're interested in my blog, if you're interested in some of the te techniques I'm using, if you're interested in the spicy uh, chicken formula, or the burly, or the burly cages, go to my website, howtofish.com.au. And if you like the video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe.